Okay, welcome back. Um, we're um, getting pretty close to getting all these components uh, uh, made for the MIPS processor. You know, we've done the instruction memory, we've done the register file, the ALU, the data memory, the ALU control, the sign extender. Well, today we're going to do the controller unit. And if you look at the controller unit, it takes six bits in, which are the upper six bits of the instruction, and that would be the opcode for both R-type, I-type, and J-type. Right? So we're basically bringing in the opcode, and then um, what we're doing is we're sending out a bunch of, bunch of one bit and possibly two bit lines that will control things. For example, reg desk comes down to here and controls this MUX. What goes into write register? Is it the destination register or the target register from your R-type command? Jump is a one bit flag that controls the MUX over here when, it, when a jump occurs. A branch is a one-bit flag that um, enables this AND gate. Okay. Mem read is telling the memory that it wants to read data, so it's going to whatever address is here, the read data is going to be driven out on this bus here. Mem to reg controls this MUX, and it says, well, which data is going to get fed back to the register? Well, it could either be memory data, or it could be ALU data. And let's see, um, ALU op, well that's that two bit output of our controller that's either going to be a 00, zero a zero 01, or a 10. I believe a uh, zero 00 was indicating that we had a load word or a store word, and zero 01 was a branch equal, and 10 was it, that what the command was an R type. And then mem write, we're going to pulse this guy when we want to take the data that's incident on the right data pen and write it to the address that's present here. So write to memory. And then ALU source determines what the second operand in the ALU is. It can either be the contents of a register file or it can be a sign extended 32 bit value. Okay. And then let's see, reg write. Yeah, once everything propagates through here, for example, we run the register data through the ALU and then this output mux and then we put it back here, we'll have to pulse reg write. Now, the thing about reg write is we're going to have to wait for the data to make it all the way through these elements and back to here before we pulse it. So we'll pulse it, um, you know, a few nanoseconds after the opcode is present here. And uh, so we have time to do the actual operation. Okay, so we're going to do the controller. Six bits in and a bunch of one bit outputs and then ALU op is a two bit output. All right, let's go ahead and do that guy. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is come over here and notice that we don't have a controller yet, so we need to uh, put a controller in there. Project, new source. Let's type in uh, controller okay, and make sure it's a VHDL module. Okay, controller. And let's see, um, what kind of input? Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy and paste because there's a bunch of inputs and outputs here. So let's come along here and just uh, get rid of all our comments. And, you know, we might use that one. Seems like we're using it a lot lately. And here's the stubbed out VHDL. Now we need to set up our entity block. So let's do that real quick. And I'm just going to copy and paste. I've got it already written out here. So if I copy and paste the contents of the entity, we end up with something like this. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's, uh, carriage return there, tab over, line it up. And there you go. What's coming into here is an opcode. That opcode is a six bit quantity. It's the uh, upper six bits of our instruction. And that's going to be the opcode, whether it's R type, I type, or J type. And then we've got our outputs reg desk, jump, branch, mem read, mem to reg, ALU op, mem write, ALU source, and reg write. And remember, ALU op was a two bit quantity. Okay? So there you go. There's the entity. Let's bring the PDF back up here just to verify. Okay. And there's my opcode going in. And then here's all my outputs, reg, desk, jump, branch. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make sure we have nine in our uh, VHDL. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so it looks like it's all ready to go. Now let's do the implementation. Well, I'm going to copy and paste that guy in there because there's a lot here. So, and then we'll talk through it. Okay. All right, so let's see. I think uh, yeah, I need a process block, so let me copy that. So down here, I don't think I have anything, um, any, I don't have any internal signals, but I do have some stuff here, and I'm going to copy that guy, 
and what we can do is we can just kind of look at it all right so here's my begin block and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a process block that has a sensitivity list that contains opcode so if opcode ever changes this block will get executed recall opcode was an input all right so um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deassert reg write because it may have been asserted from the previous command if it was an R type command okay or even a load word command so I'm going to make sure that gets deasserted and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a case statement okay and how many cases do I have well I have the case when the opcode is zero well, what does that mean zero means it's an R type command okay what kind of R type commands are we supporting we're supporting and or add subtract and set less than they all have an opcode of zero 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 and we can bring up our green card and uh, double check that if we look at and and or on the green card where's and there's and right there has an opcode of zero opcode and then where's or or is right here R type it has a opcode of zero okay R type commands okay so there's my and or add subtract set less than now this case right here corresponds to an opcode of 2, 3, hex 2, 3, and that corresponds to a load word. Okay. And this one down here corresponds to an opcode of 2B. Well, that's a store word. Okay. And then here you have an opcode of 004. Well, that corresponds to a branch equal. And then down here you've got an opcode of uh, 2 hex 2 hex zero two and that corresponds to a jump so we're only we're only implementing what five or well actually how many commands we implement jump one two three four five six seven eight nine so we, we're basically have a processor that supports nine commands now we could add a bunch more but we're just kind of trying to keep it simple so once i have all of those cases then let's see i have a uh, a catch-all statement when others equals null i basically set everything to zero and then i'm done so what you do is you kind of go back here and you look at um, each one of these commands and you say well on an and or add subtract um, what's happening well the ALU is doing the operation and then that data and then we're writing it back to a register well if I'm writing it back to a register I need to set that guy to one if you bring your PDF file back up here uh, let's see when reg dest is equal to a one then what that means is the destination register is going into write register on my reg file and I'm going to write it in the destination All right. that makes sense now it's not a jump command it's not a branch command none of these commands right here are reading memory now mem to reg zero well let's go look at that guy okay when mem to reg is zero that means this input here is getting routed through so that's the output of the ALU is getting routed back and that makes sense because this is an R type command we're gonna program the ALU to do an and or add subtract set less than and then its output is going to get routed back to here All right. and then let's see um, ALU op okay remember ALU op could take on the value 0 0 1 or 1 0 one zero was when it was an R-type command, and that told the AOU controller to uh, decode the function bits. Okay. Are we doing any memory writing? Nope. Are we doing, uh, what about ALU source? Okay, well in this case, ALU source, we want the second input of the ALU to be a register. So when ALU source is equal to zero, notice we're bringing in a register. We're bringing in read data, read, read data two into the second input of the ALU mux. And then what else? Reg write? Yes, clearly we reg write. But the thing you want to notice here is that we do it after 10 nanoseconds. So we let that opcode propagate through the entire system. Let's bring this guy back up here. Yeah, we let things, we read the registers, we go through the ALU, we bypass the memory, we bring it back to here. And then at that point, we do a reg write. Okay? And 10 nanoseconds should be sufficient for it to get make it all the way through the processor back here before we pulse it. So yes, yeah, so you can kind of do a delayed input. Now, notice if I have another command come in, then I'm going to execute this and I'm going to deassert it so that we still won't be writing. Okay. Now the next thing is load word. Well, once again, what's load word doing? Um, is it using a destination register? Well, that's the case that uh, we've got to flip that guy up. Yeah because um, that's an I-type command. Now, regdest has to be zero. So here's regdest coming down through here. 
has to be zero. So I'm going to take um, my target bits, and those are going to drive my write register as opposed to my destination bits because this is an I-type command. There are no destination bits. That's part of the 16-bit immediate field. So I've got to take my target and drive my write reg. Okay. And then the same thing. It's not a jump command. It's not a branch command. Load word. Am I reading memory? Yes, I'm reading memory. Um, so I need to pulse that on the read memory because I need to read memory, and that's what gets loaded into a register. Mem to reg is 1. All right, well, let's take a look at mem to reg. Mem to reg is a 1. Yeah, so now I'm taking the data that I just read out of memory, and that's what's being written back here to write reg. Um, and then let's see, I also pulse write memory, or mem write. Okay. And then let's see, ALU op. Okay, ALU op 0 means it's a load word or store word, and that's going to tell the ALU to add. Uh, mem write, I'm not writing memory. I am reading memory, but I'm not writing it. ALU source, well, here you want to do a load word. You're going to add a contents of a register to an immediate value. So in that case, you want to uh, have ALU source equal to 1 because you're going to take that immediate value and run that through the MUX, and that's going to get added to the contents of a register like a, a GP register. Okay. And let's see. And then we, of course, we reg write because we're loading a register. Now you can go through the rest of this stuff, but here's store word. And um, I don't really care what's on reg desk because I'm not writing the register file. I'm storing something out to memory. It's not a jump. It's not a branch. I'm not reading memory. I don't care here because I'm not, I don't care what I'm, doesn't really matter what I'm feeding back. And the ALU can choose what, or the, the, the FPGA, when it synthesizes, it can choose the appropriate value to set these to minimize the logic. ALU op was 0, 0 when it was a load word or a store word. This is a store word. We are writing memory. What We are writing memory, so we're going to pulse the memory right. And the ALU source is going to be a 1 because I have to take an offset from the sign extended and add that to a register. And I'm not doing any reg write. Okay. Now on the branch equal command, we're not writing any registers. It's not a jump, but yeah, it is a branch. And notice I put a little 2 nanosecond delay there. I don't even think that's required, but I did it. I'm not reading memory. Do I care about... Uh, whether the memory or the ALU contents get fed back to the register, I don't care. Now, I specified an ALU op of 0, 1 because it's a branch equal, and that's going to go in the ALU controller and tell the ALU to subtract. Are we writing memory? No. ALU source, okay, that has to be 0 because um, what we want to do is we want to run, okay, here's ALU source. I want to want to run a register through here and a register through here because I'm going to do a subtract and I'm going to use that zero to go up here and determine whether I multiplex on PC plus four or a branch address plus PC plus four because branch is asserted. It opens up that AND gate on the upper part. Okay. Yeah, because branch is now asserted because this is a branch command. And then we're not writing a register so we don't do anything. Okay. Now down here on jump, I'm not writing a register. I don't care what goes there. I do assert my jump bit because it is a jump command. Um, I don't do anything with branch. I don't do any memory read. I don't care about feeding this guy back. The jump command is a, um, it's, it's not even going to use the ALU op here because we're not doing any operation. So I could really put don't cares on that guy. I'm not writing memory. I'm not reading memory. Um, the ALU source, I don't care. Really, some a lot of these are don't cares, but I'm just putting them as zero, and I'm not writing a register. Really, the only thing you need there is to make sure that bit is set. Okay. And then, if there's any other commands, this is where we can implement other commands here. We can copy and paste this block, but I'm just basically doing a win others and just setting everything to zero. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. You just got a big old case statement, and uh, you got a win block for every command you're supporting. And it sets those bits accordingly. And we talked about that in class. You know, we actually set up a table that said, here's what all those bits should be. Okay. So let's take our controller, come over to here, check syntax. And we're good. Okay. I'm going to stop here. That one went way too long. And we are going to do a test bench next time.